talking oh. about some don't make no threats about my car or what <laughs> or what or what this is the main thing about these videos that be confusing me these people be trying to act like they so big and bad with these police officers but the big question is or what it's expired okay um does he have the insurance yes he has it and i have it in my car my phone oh my god phone. you you are you you <laughs> this lady here is gonna get on my nerves Forget that I'm on my own. It's no sense for me to quit. What you say? We don't know. I'm just trying to reach my goals. Heard you snitching, saying they so. You can't hang with me no more. What's up, guys? Christopher Dexter here, and I'm back with another amazing video, man. Now, today, I realized that I've been doing a lot of reacting to videos that are not cop, like police videos and stuff like that. And then I made the realization that a lot of the 2,000 subscribers that I have. Are subscribed to me because I was reacting to police videos so sorry about that but <laughs> I have to you know have some versatility in this channel you know I can't just be reacting to cop videos all the time every time you know what I'm saying I gotta be reacting to you know the new stuff what's popping in the uh, in the in the media right now and just what I like to react to so yeah uh, yeah we're gonna go ahead and get back into the regular <laughs> I can't speak right now the regular scheduled program Today, we're going to be reacting to When Playing the Race Card Backfires by Come Along. This video already has 251,000 views. It was posted a month ago. So we're going to go ahead and see what all of the hype is about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. You ever told me I got cheese? You ever made her hit her knees? Well, guess what? I'm JP. I make a bitch say, hey, yo. Up. Yep, your hands are up, and now I'm asking you to step out of the car. He verbally abused me. Well, that doesn't give you the right to spit on him. That's why wow. like you verbally abused me as soon as I got here. Did I spit on you? You're under arrest for battery. Too many people mm. don't understand the difference between a person being racist and an officer doing their job. Right. They've been conditioned to believe that whenever things don't go their way, racism is to blame. Right. For them, the law only exists to oppress them. Right. Hence, they feel no need to obey it. Those yeah. people are about to be educated. Let's see what we got. Absolutely. See what I'm saying? I hope, so, I hope you see the way you're acting. No, 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 no. I hope you can see. Because that what you doing? Duggins reveals that she is on the police advisory committee. Officer Duggins expresses mean? delight and says that he hopes others get to see how she's acting through the body cam footage. This woman is a member of the police advisory board, but despite that, she doesn't appear to know that? how the law works. At first, she attempts to throw her position of authority around to try and get out of the situation. But when the cops don't budge, she assumes the position of a victim to get back at the police officer. Uh -huh. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'm Darlene. You own the car? I do, yes. Here's what happened. I was parked up on the median. You see where I park up there or not? Yeah, I do. We have license plate readers on the car. It hit on your plate as being expired and suspended. Due but it's to not. Insurance. It's really not. No, what I'm saying is it says suspended due to insurance. I don't understand right. when they do that. Why are you going to tell the cop, or how are you going to tell the cop that their system isn't working? You know what I'm saying? Like, they're coming to tell you that your license plate is suspended. We know this for a fact because we have detectors on our car that lets us know when your license plate is suspended. But you're going to sit up here and tell me, no, it's not. Sure. <laughs> sure. And, and, and the sky is purple. You know what I'm saying? You're sure, and I can fly. Like, what are you talking about? Last one. But it's not. You you oh, you're talking about, oh, with this, what? Plate. What? The plate? Yeah, the license plate? My car, and they're trying to handle that. Uh-huh. I went to court okay. for um, my, um, uh, my registration. I can't get it. I can't get it inspected until they... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not even, I'm not even okay. uh, worried about the inspection. Right. right. It's the plate that it hits on. Right, yeah. What I'm saying is, I can't do anything until, like, as far as with that, because I haven't, like, insurance. You have insurance? Yeah, I have it. Okay. You already have it on your phone. Most yeah. The body cam I don't even know what she's talking about. Dan Duffy steps out of his car. A Mercedes Benz is pulled over in front, and he approaches the driver's side with a casual greeting. A woman identified as 53 year old Darlene Duggins Magdalinski, in the back seat behind the driver's side, answers, and they exchange pleasantries. 
Mm -hmm. Duggins admits that she is the owner of the car. Mm -hmm. The officer informs her that the license plate reader on his car picked up her license plates as being expired and suspended. Yeah. Duggins initially denies that it is expired. Mm -hmm. She says that she went to court and cannot currently do anything. The officer asks if she has insurance. Duggins claims that she does, and she has proof of it on her phone and goes to look for it. Okay. Do you have your driver's license she don't. I she had her driving. License? Yes. She does. I oh, had her do? driving because I normally drive. Oh. You want my license? No, no. You don't have your license on. She, she needs to have a license to operate the vehicle, right? It doesn't matter if you're having her driving. She needs a license. All y'all are stupid. Everybody in the car just just. Everybody in the car. This is what happens. This is what happens when you don't learn the rules. Or when you learn the rules and you try to work the system. There is no working the system, especially not for people like us. No. Okay. What does her license have to do with it? She's not driving. A T I R H. And what's your last name? Did you change companies or something? Yes, first of all, yes, I changed companies because I was with, I'm with Glazier now. Uh -huh. Who were you with? I was with Unison. Unit. So here's what happens. Okay. When you leave one company to the next, the old company sends a letter saying they don't have insurance with us anymore. New company is supposed to send something and update PennDOT. Just relax, baby. All right, so you pull that up and I'll be right back, okay? okay? sure. Officer Duffy moves to the driver of the car, Fatira, Duggan's daughter. Uh -huh. He asks her if she has her driver's license. Which she did not. Now this is where things get a bit sketchy. The woman in the back says that the driver doesn't have one, and the driver claims that she has one. Duggins says that she normally drives instead of the woman in the driver's seat. Officer Duffy confirmed that the woman driving the car didn't have a license, so uh -huh. he went to get her name. The officer returns to Duggins, who still hasn't found her the documents to prove that she has insurance. Uh -huh. Y'all car about to get, about to get, uh, what you call it, tuck it. I don't have a choice, okay? I don't have to cite you for your suspended license, I'm not going to. And if that's your child, I'm not going to take you in front of your child, okay? Follow me? I'm just going to caregiver. Here's the phone. Is this grandma? Yeah, but she's not able to. Grandma's able to help out. All right? Listen. Why put yourselves in a position for this? She over here looking like she's so stressed out. Why put yourself in this position? Why? I don't get it. We don't care until it's too late. Everything gravy until it's too late. You dig what I'm saying? All this could have been avoided if you just made sure that y'all had insurance. Made sure that the license plate wasn't suspended. Everything gravy until it's too late. I don't understand my people. I know, it sucks. Dude, it's okay. Sorry. It's I cannot it's do this bad again. experiences with this. I cannot. I understand it, but I'm stuck in between a rock and hard This is why. Here's what happens. This is what you've been doing this to me. Why did you oh, do this to me, Mom? Yo. No, I can't go. The victim mentality is insane. Because you you're driving without a license. Keep on saying why, 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 why. You broke the rules. <laughs> you broke the rules. You what are you talking about? Why? It's 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 plain and simple why. You are driving without a license. The license plate is suspended. That's why. That is exactly why. That's the main reason as to why. Mr. Duffy calls Fatira over and calmly informs her that there is a warrant for her. Yep. He tells her he has oh, to Oh, there was a warrant for her? Oh, wow. Y'all just... Y'all just... It, it, the video gets dumber and dumber and dumber. So not only were y'all riding hot, but y'all had a, a, a warrant for her arrest. Talking about some why. What did she do? ...and have a choice. He offered not to cite her for the suspended license and that he wasn't going to. He tells her he will not take her in front of her child, and he asks her to follow him. He sympathizes with Miss Fatira even as she appears to have a mental breakdown. She continues to yell that she is being unjustly treated. What? Don't make threats about my car. I told you that Six, I'm trying to, to, to Truck find... Truck 51 here. No threat. Whatever. You know what? 
I definitely need that on the phone. Get on there with the mayor and treat me. Don't threaten me. Don't threaten me. Don't threaten me. I told you I got a new phone and I'm trying to pull it up. Don't threaten me. Now the child is in the car. What? Oh God! It gets worse and worse. What about? That's a bad idea. Because you see what I, what now what we're dealing with. That is a bad with. idea. What okay. we're dealing with, and this is ridiculous. This is the third time over a KPS, and Damn. I keep going to court, and they what keep doing do this. What is a KPS? While Duggins is attempting to calm her daughter and take control of the situation, Officer Duffy informs her that he is going to have to tow her car if she cannot provide proof of her car's insurance. Yep. What I say, about to get taken. Very calm when she was informed that her daughter was going to be arrested. The mention of her car being towed immediately sent her off and she accused Officer Duffy of making threats about her car. The it's not a threat, it's a promise. <laughs> Y'all love to say that, oh, I'm not threatening you, it's a promise. That's not a threat, shawty. That's not a threat. They actually gonna take your car. <laughs> they not making no threat. They actually gonna take your car if you do not provide a, 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 the, the proper documents. The car will be taken. Talking about some, don't make no threats about my car, or what? <laughs> Or what? Or what? This is the main thing about these videos that be confusing me. These people be trying to act like they so big and bad with these police officers. But the big question is, or what? Don't make the threat about the car or what? Don't do not do this in front of my daughter or what? Or what? You gonna scrap? You gonna squabble? You gonna shoot him? You gonna take him on a high speed? Or what? What you gonna do? You gonna complain more? <laughs> That's what you're gonna do? You're gonna yell more? To warn him not to threaten her. Duggan starts to argue with the officer, and she dares him to tow her car. She I'm claims that she's okay, a well-known, respected woman, and that she has no reason to lie. The officer asks her to provide her insurance. Duggan says that she will call the mayor, but the policeman challenges her to do it. Yeah. Things are starting to get heated between Duggan's and Officer Duffy. I just want to see them take the car. No, you're not taking my plate off of my car. Mom, mom. You're, not, arrested. you're not taking my plate off of my car. Yeah. I'll wait till no, the tow truck comes. No, no, because what I need to do is I need to try to pull up my. my no, I'm going to. So try then to do it and up. stop talking. You steady over here yelling and yapping and arguing and all this extra stuff. Just pull up the documents. Hurry up. Because the truck is on the way. <laughs> the truck is literally on the way. So hurry up and pull it up. You study over here doing all this talking and yelling and showing out. Okay, no, sure. Pull it up. You could have the car on you right now, but the problem is when you drive with a plate that is suspended. But it's not. That's what I'm explaining. Well, not has it suspended. But I'll explain to you it's not suspended. But Pinnot has it suspended, so one of you, the plate is suspended. He's supposed to take your plate and send it to Pinnot, and they start suspension for three months. And what I'm explaining to you is my plate is not suspended. Well, he can show you, you cannot what? tell me that it is if we you can't you can't say it's not suspended if the system is saying that it is suspended. So this part of the argument is over with. This part of the argument is gone. Because it's already been proven. Like, like in order for us to come and tell you about... We're not just assuming that it's suspended. We didn't just look at it and we was like, okay, this looks like a suspended license. What do you think? That looks like a, suspic a, a suspended license to you? And then the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the compadre, the assistant, is just sitting there like, oh, yeah, that's definitely a suspended license. And then we just stopped you for no reason. No. There's something there that tells them, hey... Stop that car because that car has a suspended license, right? And so, therefore, here we are talking about some no, it's not. And then, like, how are you going to say no, it's not, but you're going to have an explanation for as to why it is? I went to court and I can't do anything about it. So then you're confirming that it is suspended because if it was not suspended, why would you need to go to court for it? But she's not thinking. <laughs> but she's not thinking. After several minutes of waiting for Duggins to provide her insurance, Look, he's Officer literally Duffy showing. moves to take the plates off the car, but Duggins interrupts him. Meanwhile, on the other side, another officer takes the car keys from the male passenger in the car with them. Where's the insurance? I'm going home. I'm going home. And believe me, when I get on the phone, I'm going to the phone with the keys. They got pink handcuffs? 
Make sure you do. Listen, oh, listen I'm put not him in even the front. worried about it, but your position is going to get your fired. That's what's going to happen. That. That's what's going to happen. That. That's what's going to happen. That. Sure. Gonna happen. The male passenger sure. takes the young child in the car away, while Duggins continues to argue with the cops. You all, she reveals all this that she is on the police yelling. advisory committee. Officer Duffy expresses delight at this, and says that he hopes the rest of the committee sees the way she's acting, thanks to the body cam. <laughs> right. He goes on to put cuffs on her daughter, Fatira. While Duggins continues to argue with the police, her daughter is placed under arrest and led to the back of the van. Yep. The officer takes the plates off her car and informs her that she is going to receive a citation. Yep. Duggins tells the cop that he's going to get fired. Okay. She requests a pen and a paper, then says she needs to know the name of the officer. The he other can just tell you. Happily provides both. Right. And Officer right. Duffy comes and gives her his card even before she asks. She continues to scream threats at the officer as she leaves the scene. The allegations Duggins Magdalensky had leveled against Officer Dan Duffy were dismissed, being deemed baseless. Right. Duggins resigned from the police advisory committee board after members voted to oust her. <laughs> Crazy. Her job is to solve violent crime, which the Chattanooga Police Department solves now present a violent crime in this city. And the majority, 57 percent of all things that y'all do are non-violent, non-violent crimes that y'all harass people. Mott claims the job of the police is to solve violent crimes. No, but they harass people all instead. Crime. City Council candidate Marie Mott was pulled over because her passenger headlight was out. But she didn't believe this offense was worth pulling her over. Even though she hasn't gotten the position yet, Marie already thinks she's at liberty to dictate the severity of her own offenses. <laughs> of course, things don't go her way. Right. I'm also coming in the Chinese Police Department. The reason I pulled you over is your passenger headlight is out. Okay. That's not a reason to pull me over. Yes, ma'am, it is. Do you have your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance on you? So, ma'am, you just whip a, a, you just get an illegal U-turn to come over here and harass me. That's not a crime that my headlight is out. Yes, ma'am, it's a traffic violation. That's not a headlight if, if it went out while I'm driving. That's not, that's not a crime. The police officer walks up to Mott's car and informs her of the reason why she was pulled over. Mott responds by saying that the light law violation was not enough reason to pull her over. The officer disagrees. Mott points out that the officer did an illegal U-turn to come harass her. The officer asks for her license registration and insurance. Mott agreed to provide her license and nothing else. Her reason was that the police had no reason to pull her over to begin with. Mott says she has not committed a crime. The police officer disagrees once more, saying that she did, in fact, commit a crime. Mott argues that it is not a crime that her headlight is out. The officer tells I don't understand this telling the cops that it's not a crime. Their job is to know what's a crime and what's not. Their job is to know what is a crime and what is not. If they did not know what the crime was, they, didn't, they needed your help. <laughs> they probably would have called you to be on the team. If they needed your help so bad to tell them what is a crime and what's not, you probably would be on the team, bro. They would be calling you every single time they get into a situation. Oh, yeah, we need to get Mots on the phone to verify if this is a crime or not. You feel me? <laughs> like That it is a traffic violation. Mott says it is not a crime if it went out while she was driving. You're harassing a black Do you have woman. insurance on your vehicle? Oh, God. I, yes, I have insurance. Okay. Are you I asking me that because I'm black? No, ma'am. No, they ask everyone that, lady. <laughs> they ask everyone that, woman. So much of the because I'm black, bro. And this is why they say that black people have black privilege. Because of the fact that every single time we get into some type of situation, it's so easy for us to just be like, oh, you're doing this because I'm black. Oh, you're being racist. This, that, and the third. Because of so much stuff that's been happening. And I've actually been doing a lot of, res a lot of research on like, police brutality and like, how many black people really do get uh, hurt by the cops and you know, harassed by the cops. And... It doesn't seem like it's that like it's as bad as I was led to believe. It does not. It does not seem like it, it, it was as bad as I was led to believe. You know what I'm saying? And we can make a whole other video about that. But, you know, this whole mentality that police are just out to get black people. And like, this is like every single chance they get, they trying to tear a brother down. Like, bro, if you're doing something illegal, <laughs> you're going to get stopped. If you are getting arrested and you start resisting, you're going to get restrained. 
I don't understand the mentality and trying to go back and forth with the police. No, yes, ma'am. Everyone in this state has to have insurance. Ma'am, that went out while I was driving. I'm not doing nothing. That doesn't matter. It's out. I'm not doing nothing illegal. You're harassing me. After the officer takes the license, Maud accuses her of harassing a black woman. The officer ignored her statement and asked her if she... Also, it's not a crime to harass a black woman. It's not. <laughs> it's not a crime for that. Mott says she does and asks if the officer was inquiring about that because she's black. The officer says no. Mott doubles down and accuses the officer of asking her for her insurance because she is black. She continues to accuse the officers of harassing her. The officer inquires if the car belongs to Mott. She responds rudely, but the officer remains calm and polite, asking her to sit tight for a moment. And what were you? Why are you pulling up over here and even identified yourself? I don't even know you. Hey, whoa. Okay. Okay. You don't gotta know them. You don't gotta know him. Talking about some, I don't even know you. You don't gotta know us. <laughs> we know you. We have your ID. <laughs> Talk about some, I don't even know you. You don't gotta know us. This is what happens when you don't go through stuff in life. And then you get to a certain point where you've just been skating the whole time. You've been skating the whole time. And then you get to a certain point where you think that Anytime you get into trouble or anytime somebody confronts you about something, they're immediately being malicious. So it's this victim mentality and this entitlement inside of a lot of people that make them feel like whenever they're being confronted about something, immediately somebody's just, just like like somebody's just coming at them. When no, bro, you're in the wrong. You did something wrong. And so, therefore. You're being corrected. People don't want to be corrected nowadays, though. People don't want to be told about themselves. So they do, they do stuff like this. And it's embarrassing for everybody else. And by everybody else, I mean everybody else that's black. Everybody else in the black community. That's actually, that actually, got, that actually has a head on their shoulders. You don't even know you're a stranger. You don't even identify yourself. Uh, I am Officer Monroe with Chattanooga Police. I was coming to come Hi. back up my my partner just to make sure I, she was okay. You need to identify yourself. That's part of your Well, you protocol. were in the you were in the middle of a conversation. So how was I gonna go? I'm Officer Monroe, and you're correct. Yes, I just moved to this team, so I'm glad that we're actually gonna go ahead and meet properly. And like I've said before, this ain't no properly. Like I've said before, I have not raised my voice at you at all. I have not been rude to you at all. So, um. Your partner just literally whipped around and did a legal U-turn okay. to come follow me. Body cam footage switches to the other police officer walking up to the passenger side of the car while Mott is still speaking. The other officer leaves, but Mott is still chirping. She turns mm. and sees officer number two on the window of the passenger side and immediately goes off on him for not identifying himself. Officer number Looking two for any reason to start a little debate. She's trying to pick any little reason. Oh, you did a U-turn. Oh, you didn't identify yourself. This, that, and the third. They don't got to do a none of that. <laughs> they don't got to do none of that. If any, like you know what I'm saying, like if anything, you're the person that has to identify yourself. You're the person that has to follow traffic rules. You're the person that needs to keep your composure before things go left. But y'all not thinking about that. And we see so many. I need to stop talking about the video informed her that he was only coming to back up his colleague. Mott tells him he should have identified himself, and Officer Monroe points out that she was in a conversation, and he was trying not to be rude. Mott continues to rant, saying that the officers were white cops in a black community, and saying that they were harassing her. She goes back to the other officer doing an illegal U-turn to come harass her. Officer number two argues that his colleague was doing her job, to which Mott states that the job of the police is to solve violent crimes. You've got a lot of facts. Do you look those up? I got a lot of facts because I'm a community activist. And I okay. see this is the kind of stuff that happens in a black community all the time. One cop one cop pulls us over, five cops will pull us. Do you, this do doesn't you, happen. Since you're an activist, community. do you understand that usually traffic stops for police officers are the most dangerous because we don't know who we're pulling you? Uh, excuse me, man. Uh, do, can I get your phone number real quick? Okay. Uh, for documentation. Uh, what I, so what, what do you think, woman? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing right now? That's your answer. Whatever is going on in this situation, that is your answer. We 
We like to have information of everybody that we step out with. While Mott continues to rant, Officer Number Two comments on the facts she has stated and asks if she has looked them up. Mott responds that she has a lot of facts because she is a community activist and that she sees the kind of stuff that happens in the black community all the time. Mm -hmm. She comments on the fact that more police officers were arriving on the scene. Officer number two goes on to ask if she is aware that traffic stops are the most dangerous for police officers since they don't know who they are pulling over. Mott denies this and immediately goes on to say that the police beat up a lot of people. She claims to know her rights better than the police officer does. Another officer arrives to collect her phone number. So then show me. The female officer returns and informs her of all of her violations. Of course, Mott doesn't like this and immediately begins to question the officer. They argue back and forth over the Mott's various violations. At some point, she even steps out of the car to address the problem of her plates being obstructed. Mott finally signs the citation and demands to have the officer's cards. The officer provides her card. Mott continues to argue that she has proof of insurance even though she declined to provide one. The officer informs her that her computer shows that the car's insurance was not confirmed. Wow. The traffic stop eventually comes to an end. So that's why you didn't show the, the insurance. You ain't got none. <laughs> you ain't got none. That's what happens. Mrs. Mott suffered multiple consequences for her rude and callous behavior. Yep. She was forced to appear in court. Yep. The body cam footage was released before the runoff in the city council elections in which Mrs. Mott was a candidate. And that certainly did some damage. The Ooh. video also proved that the stop was not for any racist reasons. Yep. Just showed how entitled you are. That's all that showed. Cost. Somebody got caught with a gun. Cost. Somebody got caught with a gun. After confirming several times that there were no weapons in the car, the police found ammo, a magazine, and finally, a gun in the car Clarence Williams was driving. It's amazing how people can be so wrong and yet claim to be victims when they have to face the consequences of their actions. This driver got up, lawfully sir? pulled over and decided to pull the racism card. Unfortunately, it backfires and lands him in even bigger trouble with the police. Yeah, I'm going. To, uh, I'm going to have a procedure done on my shoulder. I got you. Surgery. Okay. Yeah. So that was. I'm like. I got you. So when I'm looking, I'm. I'm seeing one lane this way. Yeah. Okay. You're all over. Over the place. Switching lanes. I got you. Uh, uh, all right, man. Okay, yeah. That was all. I'm just going to metro for procedure. Okay. You got your ID with you real quick. Uh, you don't got it. This is not my car. It's my girl's car. So this oh God. Is my, um, got your ID though. Yeah. 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 All right. Do you have your um? Or her insurance card with you? No, 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 no. Okay. Because um, I, I normally drive my car, but my car is in tank. But she is, and I drove her car because it's cheap on gas. I got you, man. So uh huh. Like, I got you. Go, go All right, just hang tight for me for a minute, okay? I'll be back with you. My procedure's at two. All right, man. I'll do. I'll do. I'll make it quick for you. It's not about to go good. <laughs> it's not about to go good. The first good. few seconds of the body cam footage has no audio. It shows the officer getting out of his car and he's approaching a silver-colored Volkswagen sedan. Yeah. The driver of the car is dressed in a white shirt. He was later identified as Clarence Williams. Clarence. The audio starts with the man trying to explain himself and how he couldn't see the lane, and the officer tells him that he was all over the place. Williams presents his ID, but tells the officer that the car is not his, but his girl's car. Yep. He informs the officer that he has to go for surgery, and his procedure is at two o'clock. Uh-huh. The officer promises to make the stop quickly, as he returns to his patrol car with the ID. Yes, we got a uh, nice cop. How old are you? I'm 36. 36? 36. All right. All right, you mind stepping out for me real quick so I can talk to you out here? Get out the car. You got no guns, uh, drugs, no, no, no. knives, anything like that on you? No, what's the problem? All right, man. Get out with. Right, I'm going to check you real quick, okay? You can turn around for me. Right, make sure you ain't got nothing on you. Put your sag in pants. No, the car smells like weed, bro. Oh, I'm man. Here we go. go. No, okay. Alrighty. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do is kind of, I'm by myself right now. My other guys right there on another stop. I'm gonna put you in the back of my car. No cuffs or anything like that. I'm gonna go through your oh, car and I'll get you on your way. Okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. All right. What well, yeah. do you call them? Let me here. Let me. I'll grab your phone for you. Here's my whole thing. If you're in an illegal state, 
why would you smoke weed in your car? Why would you have weed laying around in your car? You dig what I'm saying? Why? I don't. I don't, I don't understand. I don't. I don't understand. If you're in an illegal state, why have the car smelling like weed? And then when the cops come, because listen, weed has a very distinct smell. So there's no way you don't smell that the car smells like marijuana. There's no way you don't smell that. So the second you go inside your car and you smell the fact that there's that, that you can smell weed in the car, that's red flag number one to one. Don't be driving recklessly. Or maybe don't drive at all. Don't drive recklessly. Make sure that you got insurance, you got everything set up. Make sure you're not driving someone else's car. Make sure that you're not hitting any red flags. Or, this is a big or, don't have the car smelling like weed. Do not have the car smelling like weed. I don't understand. And then we all get caught up with this whole thing. Y'all want to hit the, oh, come on. Oh, come on. Why you tripping? You tripping. No, you tripping. <laughs> no, you tripping. You know it smells like weed because he knows it smells like weed. And, and you literally, you wouldn't even got to smoke weed to know what weed smells like. It's so distinct. It's, it has such a specific smell. Like, oh, my goodness. Now it's a waste of your time. Yeah. All right. Make sure you shut the door. Go ahead. Right. No, dude, come here. No, I ain't doing nothing, bro. Uh, all right. <sighs> all right. You're good, bro. Listen to that back Beatles. Here, dude, you're good. That I'm not being racist, dude. Here's your phone. All right. All right, there's your phone. All right. There's your phone. That's it. Ain't no cigarettes don't smell like weed. All right, man. My boss is right over there. The officer runs the ID and moves back to Williams's car. The officer asks his age and then asks him to step out of the car. While he is doing that, the officer inquires if he has any guns or drugs in the car. The man answers that there aren't. The officer pats him down and the man asks him what's going on. The officer tells him that his car smells like weed. Yep. The man claims there's no weed in the car. The officer tells him that he will be seated in the back of the patrol car without cuffs. The man is unhappy about this and requests to make a call. The officer takes precautions and offers to grab the phone for him. The man steps away from the car dramatically, even though the <laughs> officer reassures him he's good. Yep. While the policeman grabs the phone, the man accuses the cop of being racist. The cop says that he's not and offers Williams his phone. The man continues to throw a tantrum, but he approaches and grabs his phone. I've already patted him down. He's all good. He just, uh, I'll just sit in my bed. car real quick he while said, I go through the car. Password. And that's fine because I was on my GPS because I couldn't find this place. Right. I had a surgery Relax. to go to Relax. at right, 2 o'clock. I said, you can search the car when I come out of surgery. I've been trying to do this, get this surgery done for two years Understand. on my shoulder, bro. That's Understand. Crazy. Two years oh, is a, crazy. She smokes cigarettes. Dad, hey, Dad. That, that I am pulled over by Broadview Heights. Oh my God, he's he doing what do you need to everything. Do, I have license, I have license, I have license and everything. You need to stay still, they get hit by a car, all that moving year. around you doing. And, and, they, and they still, they told me they got to search mm. the car for weed. They got pounds of weed. What? My, bro, Ain't nobody said nothing about right no here. pounds of weed. We just said it smells like weed. <laughs> like this is what happens when you got, when you do something wrong and you got to create something out of nothing. To draw away from what it actually is. Talking about some, they're talking about I got pounds of weed. Did it, did it, did it, did it, dad. Dad, which I ain't gonna do nothing. You ain't doing nothing but prolonging the inevitable. Because inevitably, they're gonna search the car. And we already seen that they found a gun in the car. So inevitably, they're gonna search the car. Inevitably, they're gonna find that there's a gun in the car. Inevitably, they're probably gonna find some drugs. It's inevi it's, it's inevitable. And if we know that it's inevitable, why are we doing the whole? Why are we doing all the extras? If it was me and I was in his position, I would have just been like, I would have just told him, cause he's gonna find it. <laughs> he's gonna find it. So instead of doing all this extra stuff for absolutely no reason, 
Just tell them what you have in there. And they're probably going to treat you better just for being honest. Just for literally just being like, yo, he didn't try to put up a fight. He didn't try to lie to us. He literally just told us what it was. We found it. We, he let us arrest him. And everything's cool. They're probably going to give you points for that. Or whatever they can do for you. But no, you over here tripping. You over here tripping. Why? Why? Oh, whatever. You hear me? Yeah. Hold on, let me explain something to you. Operator Robert Tom, 6404021, Yo, the First father all, talking to him ain't going, ain't going to do nothing. Going and then we'll talk to dad. Go. I understand no, that. I, I, I had to be there at two. I said you could touch the car when I'm done. I just got to get done. That's, That's not how that works. You can't just dip. So what's the reason of the search? He already told He's you. Listen to me. Listen to me. Anything can smell like weed. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. What's your name, sir? What's your name, sir? What's your name, sir? Now it's racism. I don't know. I don't know who you are. You just look me up. You just ran my name. Can you just run my name, right? You just ran my name. Have your surgery go to jail. Right. That's crap. Listen Dad, to me. I'm about to miss the surgery again. Listen to me. Let me talk to you about it and I'll explain what's going on. Bro. You gotta calm down so I can talk to you, okay? Man, I already know what's going on. Y'all racist. He seen the black guy and da da da. Okay, what? You need to calm down, all right? <laughs> Here's the problem. You got two options. He's right. He's right. He does his job and you leave. Two, you get wound up and start getting crazy. I'm sorry, but you, I'm sorry. it doesn't matter. I'm trying because to he's right. He can arrest you and he doesn't want to. So just calm down and we'll get out of here. That's it. Word. Relax, relax, boy. Another police officer arrives on the scene, presumably officer number one supervisor. Officer number one oh, informs Williams that his boss has arrived and that he could speak with him. The man approached officer number two and began to explain that he was on his GPS and he had surgery to go to at two o'clock. Williams continues to rage even as the cops try to placate him. He calls his father on the phone, but officer number two declines to talk until they have explained things to Williams. Officer number one goes on to search the car. Williams calls the police racist for attempting to search his car, saying that they were doing it because he was a black guy. Officer number two explained to Williams that if he allowed the other officer to search the car, he could be done and on his way. The other option was that he could be arrested. Hey bro, you said there's no guns in the car? Yeah. Does your girlfriend shoot or something? I found like a magazine, some ammo. Uh, yeah. I got you. No, I'm just making sure. Yeah, we're at. Oh man. Cuffs. Cuffs. Can I go now, please? No. Oh, my God. Put your hands behind your back for me. Oh, my God. Now I gotta put my hands behind my back. Let me talk to Dad. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Stop doing all the no action. There's no gun in the car, bro. What? It isn't. There isn't? No. There isn't. Dude, I asked you how many times there, if there was a gun in the I car. Said, there's no gun in the car. There isn't. Okay. What the f*** are you talking about? There's no okay. gun in the car. He not even finna argue with you. That's how wrong you are. He not even finna sit here and go back and forth with you. Cause you've been doing the extras this whole time, so you're gonna just sit up here and you're gonna try to make up another lie. He not even finna sit up here and do it with you, bro. Well it's on the passenger seat right now and I found it hidden hidden by the gear shifter. What the f Now it's what the before my life. Yeah. I... <laughs> yeah. I... Get in the car. I never, I'm, I'm gonna go through. I never, I, I never seen that before in my All right. life. Nothing okay, nothing okay. All. All right. I swear to God. Go in the car. That's not mine. That's nothing now it's not your. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. Get in the car. <laughs> you sure your girlfriend's a cop? We're at. Oh, she a cop Where's now? Cop at, bro. Cleveland. Okay. We'll get all this figured out. Thank you. Hey. All right, man. All right. All right. Nothing's going on at all. I don't know. Okay. Nothing about nothing. All right, man. Take it all right. Yeah. <laughs> Body cam footage cuts back to officer number one as he searches the car on the passenger side. He goes to confirm Williams' claim there are no firearms in the car. 
He asks Williams if his girl shoots because he found some magazines and ammo in the car. Right. William confirms that she does. The officer continues his search and eventually a gun turns up. It is hidden inside the shifter. Right away, the police put handcuffs on Williams. Yep. The cop informs him that there is a gun in the car as he is led to the back of the police cruiser. Clarence Williams was indicted for having weapons while under disability, wow. carrying concealed weapons, and improperly handling firearms in a motor vehicle. This situation would have turned out much better than it did if Williams had been cooperative from the start and hadn't yep. pulled the race card. Yep. Now look where that got him. No, 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 step out. Bro, what? you can't pull out of car? Yeah. Bro, you can't fool in my car. I'm not gonna. No, stop. you're not gonna fool. Step out. Step this is the last one. Step out. Step out. The woman tries to roll up her mirror and leave before the stop is over. The cops open the door and hold it open as she tries to shut it again. This woman had committed nearly every violation in the book. At first, the police pulled her over for speeding. Mm -hmm. She was going 50 miles per hour where it should have been 30 miles per hour. Then they found out she was drinking, but it didn't stop there. Her car is unregistered and uninsured, and when the police ask her to step out, she immediately plays the race card and tries to resist arrest. This woman is a total piece of work, folks. Yeah. Can you open this one? Does it roll down? Can you Let's see about open it? it? Can, can you roll this one down? Does it not open? You come outside. No, I'm saying I got. I'm talking to you on this side. Can you roll this down all the way? Can you roll it down more for me, please, so I can talk to you? Roll down so, the yeah, car. All, all the way Hello. down, please. No, okay, so Officer Kelly, I know the reason I stopped you for your speed and your tags expired. Can you please roll the window down all the way? Roll the window down. How far is all the way? All the way. Like, all the way down. Can you, can you not be stupid? Can you can you not please don't be stupid? <laughs> Talk about some how far is all the way. Till the window, this is how far all the way is. So the window gets about right here. <laughs> so the window gets about right here. Talk about some how far is all the way. Please don't be stupid. Please. Okay, let me get your license from you. No, yeah. No, I'm literally asking you. All the way down. Like, to, like, bruh, stop being stupid. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Like, you know where all the way was, bro. Officer Caliendo approaches the passenger side of the woman's SUV and knocks on the window. We see the driver sitting in the car, and the officer tries to motion for her to roll down the window. She motions for the officer to move to the driver's side of the car. She finally rolled the passenger side down just enough so her voice could get through. Mm -hmm. She asks him to move over to the other side, but the officer says no. The officer asks her to roll the window all the way down, but the driver asks him to come over to the other side of the car. The officer Why refuses his... and informs what her that she world? was pulled over for speed. I don't like how his voice just changed. <laughs> I don't like how his voice just changed. That was creepy officer says no. The officer asks her to roll the window all the way down, but the driver asks him to come over to the other side of the car. Yo, why did his voice just turn? This man went from Robin to Batman in seconds. What in the world? They missed it. The officer told the officer said to go to the other side of the car. <laughs> the officer refuses and informs her that she was pulled over for speeding and politely asks that she roll the window all the way down so that he can talk to her. Yeah. The woman doesn't seem to be able to understand I do not what the like his voice now. by all the way. As Yo, what's wrong with his voice? She asks him how far all the way is. No, that was not a joke. After multiple back and forth, she finally comprehends what Officer Caliendo means. Once that is done, he asks for her license and proof of insurance once more. All right, the Batman. goes to get it. Okay. Yeah, so Shales is a 30 right there, and so you're going 50. So you had 20 over, so a little bit fast, okay? It's got a feature from uh, the Dark Knight just now. is not reading correctly, so I don't know what it says. So okay. I apologize it's it. if it doesn't read what, you, what you're reading this. So thank you for letting me aware. Yeah. Letting me aware. to tonight? Home. Home? Yes. Over on Kenneth? Yes. Do you have uh, insurance in the car as well? <laughs> All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hmm. Um, can I give you the email version? Yeah, if you have it on your phone, that's oh, fine. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Where are you coming from? My home. You're going home? You're going home coming from home. I made this realization the other day. Some people are just stupid. And it's okay. It's okay to have the understanding and the realization that some people are just dumb.
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, not everybody got, got it all together. Not everybody got it all up there. You know what I'm saying? The light's on, but the wind, nobody's, nobody's home. You know what I'm saying? And you're coming from home? No. You just I said yes. Out, and then my friend had a birthday party, and she had a situation, and then I went with her. Okay. Does she live in town, or? Latavia? Oh, okay. Officer Caliendo informs her that she was going 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. The yep. woman responds by saying her speedometer isn't working, so she doesn't know. The officer asks her where she's headed. She says she's going home. The officer takes her license and asks for her insurance. While she is still searching for proof of insurance, the cop asks her where she is coming from, and she answers that she is coming from home. This is the point where you realize that she is not all sober in the car. Yeah. She told the policeman earlier that she was going home. Her response gets even more confusing with further questioning. How much have you had to drink? Tonight. You just not gonna Is that a question? Is that, a, is that an answer? Because you've got a couple empty shooters on the ground. Right there, it looks like three of them. Yeah, that's not pertaining to the night. Okay, so you can't have one, two, three, four. I don't, so I gotta explain some people previously, I don't, there's multiple, multiple people that drive my car. So, okay, it doesn't know. matter. You're still in possession of it, okay? okay so, <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's okay. probably just not a good idea, if, if, even if someone else is drinking them in your car, to leave them there, okay? Right, I got you. I understand it. I thank you for your, your concern. Officer Caliendo. You said what? Caliendo. And then, what, what is the purpose of the pullover? Uh, you're going 20 over the speed limit and your tag's expired. Mm. That's the reason. Okay, let me call my lawyer. Oh, you know, I'm not gonna. You, you no, can. No, no, I'm, I'm not gonna no, have no, no, you. No, no, I'm not okay, hang out here. Yeah, the officer he's getting asks tired her how much she had to drink that night. The woman doesn't answer. Then the officer points out three empty bottles of alcohol on the floor of her car. The woman says those weren't pertaining to that night. She says there were multiple people who drove her car, but the officer says that doesn't matter since she's still in possession of it. Right. They both go silent for a time, and then the officer tells her to wait while he goes back to his car for a moment. The audio shuts off briefly, and then Officer Caliendo comes back and introduces himself to her. She asks what the purpose of being pulled over, and the policeman informs her that she was going over the speed limit and her tag was expired. The woman says that she is going to call her lawyer. Officer Caliendo tries to placate her, but she seems like she is going to argue, so he tells her to wait, and he finally leaves for his car while another policeman arrives. Okay. Hello. Yes. I'm just gonna see if you have your insurance for him. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's in the. Uh, okay. One second. You wanna look at it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, come, come on, come on, come in. Zoom in. What? Zoom in? I don't. Are you asking me? <laughs> to zoom no, in? I'm not asking you anything. You're standing over me while I'm talking to my brother. <laughs> Oh, your no, brother. yeah, well, yeah, I'm just here to see if you have your insurance on. Oh, I have my insurance. I gave you my insurance already. No, you didn't. You never showed me your insurance. It's like five people that came over to my car already. It's only me. No, it's only... Oh, here. God, you're making it look so bad for you. Shadi said it's like five people that came into my car already. That's how spaced out you are. That's how drunk you are. That's how. That's how... That's how impaired you are. It's been five people. No, it's only it's only two people here, and only one of them has <laughs> only one of them has spoken to you yet. This lady is crazy. The insurance. I'm not dealing with that right now. Whatever. You're not dealing with that right now. Body cam footage switches to the second policeman, Officer Salgado. He approaches the car on the driver's side and briefly looks in the back seat of her car before her. Once more, he asks for her insurance to show Officer Caliendo. The woman says she's already given the officer her insurance already. The officer says that she hasn't. The woman says there have been about five people who have already come over to her car. The officer tells her there's only been two of them. I'm out here, like, they harassing me, like, what the f is going on? How am I harassing you? Bro. All I asked was for your insurance, that's it. I have my insurance. I gave you my insurance card already. No, you, no, did, you not. did not. Okay. I apologize. No, you're fine. You just... So much of the I apologize. 
My brother is coming. He has the insurance, all this stuff for you, okay? He has the insurance? Yes, he has my insurance. Why does he have the, the insurance? Car, everything. He's like, we live two minutes away from him. He'll be here in one second. Gotcha. Okay. I'm just concerned because, I mean, you told me that you showed it to me just now twice, but now you're saying that your brother has the insurance. Right. Yes, I do show the insurance card to the officer prior to you. Okay. Was that one expired or something? Or? No, it wasn't expired. Okay. Um, does he have the insurance? Yes, he has it. And I have it in my car. My phone. Oh, my God. Phone. You, you, are, you, you. <laughs> This lady here is gonna get on my nerves. First, your brother has it. Then, the cop has it. Now, you have it. Who has the insurance, guys? Can y'all tell me in the comments who has the insurance? I'll tell you, no one does. Wanna know why? Cause she doesn't have it. <laughs> like. Guys, right, so I didn't want to do too much. Gotcha, okay. Was there something going on or what happened? Oh, I don't know why he stopped you, to be honest with you. Can you, can you find out? I just got you. He'll be out he here. He already to told you. Okay. Mm -hmm. You Talking should find some... out before you just hover over people like his. Like, you're stupid. No, so typically, um, especially in night shift, we just have two officers when normally uh, yeah. we pull over our vehicle. While Officer Salgado continues to wait for the woman to provide proof of her car's insurance, she begins to mumble something about how they were harassing her. Officer Salgado asks her how they are harassing her. She doesn't At least his voice is back to normal. The officer tells her all he did was ask for her insurance. She says that she already gave him the insurance. He tells her that she didn't. The woman apologizes. The officer accepts. She tells him that her brother is coming with the insurance. The officer points out that she already said that she had shown them her insurance, and now she's saying that her brother was with her insurance. Her explanation for this mix-up is confusing at best. Okay, so you're gonna get arrested for obstructing if you don't. Let me talk to my lawyer. Okay, so what I'll, I'll call have my you, lawyer. Let me call my lawyer. I'm gonna have you do is step out. No, 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 step out. Bro, hey. you can't pull my car. <laughs> Bro, you can't pull Please. my car. I'm yeah. not gonna. Yes, he no, can. No, you're not gonna pull. Step out. Step out. Yes, he can. Step out. Don't do it. Step don't out. do it. Don't do it. Oh, I thought she was there. Step out. Step out. Step out. Step out. Step out. You're grabbing me. Step out. You're grabbing me. You're grabbing me. You're grabbing me. You need to get out of here. You're grabbing me for no reason. Hey, don't turn the car on. Get out. Get out. I think you're about to pull a high speed. Well, you're under arrest now. Okay. You're under arrest. Get out. Get out. Let's redo it. Get out. He said, let's redo it. Nah, ain't no redo. Ain't get no reset out. button. Bro, let's redo ain't no, it. Nah, ain't sure no not, reset button. Because I didn't do anything wrong against y'all. Nah. For real. Nah. You know it. Get out. Nah. I didn't do anything wrong against y'all. Nah, I'm come on, man. Step out. Come on, man. Get out of the car. Come on, dog. I haven't done anything wrong against y'all. Get out the car. Get out the car. Get out. Get out of the car. Tell me what the hell I done. You have to read my rights. Did he read my rights? Get it. Yeah, yeah. They, there we go. Bro, did you read my rights? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I have a lawyer. Do what you gotta do. <laughs> do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. Did you read my rights? Can we at least move the coat? Okay. All right. So, you're under arrest for obstructing resisting. Just ask you to step now out. Now you're reading my rights afterwards. You read Let's my rights up. afterwards. Shut up. Shut that's up. Shut right up. You ran my life right afterwards. Here, put you your knees ran up. my put, life put your knees afterwards. Put your knees After what? We getting? <laughs> we talk about some afterwards. She thinks that her uh, that them pulling her out of the car was the arrest. No, the arrest is us putting the handcuffs on you and putting you inside of our car. Talking about some. You read my rights afterwards. After what? After us restraining you because you were resisting. Talk about some afterwards. We were trying to get you out the car. You were being a child. Talk about some afterwards. Right, 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 afterwards. Shut up. Officer Caliendo returns to her car and asks her to step out. The woman threatens to call her lawyer, but the policeman insists that she step out of the car. She tries to yeah. roll up the window, but he opens the car door. Yeah. The woman continues to struggle with the cops and resist. She tries to close the door again, but the officer holds it open. She continues to ignore the order to step out of the vehicle. The officers grab her, and she starts to scream. He warns her not to turn on the car. 
The woman asks if they grabbed her because she's black, and the officer tells her it is because she has an open container. Yep. She continues to resist the cops. While she continues to fight the police, they inform her that she is under arrest. Yep. The struggle intensifies as they attempt to pull her out of the car. The woman continues to demand that the officers read her rights. The officer finally manages to get her out of the car, and then they read her rights after she is face down on the ground and the cuffs are on her wrists. Yep. She continues to complain that the officer read her rights afterward. You read my rights All right, after. we're gonna stand up. All righty. Let's, uh, let's go they to the squad. You, you know me. Yeah, I'm saying they read my rights He's after. Us, right? No, it's not okay. Let's go talk about the police department. Get in the car, please. Please, yeah. You gotta search me. Search me. Okay. Search me. Search, search, right? search me. They, they read my rights after. That. What do you mean? It's okay. I'm gonna talk to my lawyer. Okay. Me and you are corrupt. Okay. What do you mean they read you your rights after? Yeah. Yep. Okay. There you go. All right. No, it's cool. They read my rights afterwards. It's cool. Okay. Okay. Bro! It's cool. Take Bro! It. Take it. Take it. Yeah, let me talk. No, no, hey. No, I told you I told you what the deal would be. No, I'm talking to my brother because he know. Because I'm not on that lake. Come on. I thought the master. Who got a master? You got a master? Okay, you ain't got a master. You got a, you got, you got a bachelor's degree? Who got a bachelor's? Don't put that. Don't put that. Why are we talking about degrees? Yeah, you're going to catch yeah, another charge. Shit. That might... Oh, that's what you want, right? That makes you feel good, right? A double cage? Well, just get the No, easy okay, I know. Go and take a seat. There's okay. a white woman. Take a seat, bro. Come on, take a seat. I don't want I'm not doing I'm sitting I don't want right to here. Lift you into the car. I'm sitting him right here. Everyone else has a single I'm cool. cage. Right? I'm all cool. Paris. You have a you have a what? Have a you have a double, double or single? Yeah. You have a double? Yeah. Yes. Bring that over. Yeah. Bro, are my kids good? Oh, 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 What's wrong with this lady? The woman doesn't stop fighting, but the cops finally wrestle her into the back of the car and take her yeah. away. Mm -hmm. The woman was charged with two counts of resisting and obstructing a police officer, driving under the influence of alcohol, operating a vehicle with an expired registration, speeding, illegal transportation of alcohol, and operating an uninsured vehicle. As it turns out, being black doesn't mean you're above the law. Yeah. We can go ahead and end that right there, man, bro. If you black, that don't give you a free pass to cuss out the police. If you black, that don't give you a free pass to resist the police. If you black, that don't give you a free pass to act crazy. It doesn't. Regardless of what our ancestors went through, bro, why make it worse? You know what I'm saying? Our ancestors are looked at like saints. And our ancestors are looked at like such powerful role models of our society because they were not acting like this. They were not getting pulled over for DWIs. You know what I'm saying? They were not, or not DWIs, DUIs. They were not getting pulled over for stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? But... It is what it is, man. If you guys like this video, if you guys like this video and there was a pretty cool video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the post notifications. Share this video with all of your friends. And it's under some guys. Peace out. And I just had to clear my mind real quick. They count me out, but I be all the odds and all them differences. You serve the white man, you don't get no perks, you don't get no benefits. You serve yourself, you get what you deserve. I swear I witnessed it. Got it together. Me and my brother, we sticking together for real.